Originally, it was the Romans who first invented a crude flour and water dough mixture that was wrapped around meat and game before roasting. It was only there to retain the meat juices and aroma and not meant to be eaten. It became the pot to cook the meat. By medieval times, the pastry became as important as the fruit, meat, fish, and game that they covered. Today, we add a West Coast flair to the tradition of pot pie with a spot prawn and ham pot pie. I'm Garrett Shack, and today, that's what we're cooking on the coast. Great on a cold night, we add a West Coast take to this crusty comfort classic. It's spot prawn and ham pot pie. Let's get started. Now, first thing we need for the pot pie, of course, a delicious crust. And one of my favorite recipes is dead simple that you have to make this at home, all right? So, first thing you're going to need is a food processor and a little bit of flour. I'm not adding it all, I have extra here so I can, uh, so I can roll it out afterwards. And I'm going to add it in just increments here so I don't get the, the batter too dry. Then equal parts butter and cream cheese. And that's it, those three ingredients. Well, we'll put some salt in there. You could add, uh, you could add some, some herbs and spices and so on if you'd like. In this case, we're going super simple. We're gonna let the, uh, the ingredients inside the pot pie really make the difference. Okay, tuck these away. And then a few seconds of noise. Ready? So the reason I only, okay, let me stop. The reason I only added half is that we don't get this giant explosion of flour in the, uh, in the food processor either. Okay, let's have a look at it. I can see, and you can as well here, it's still really wet, like it's, you know, super wet. So we definitely want to add some more flour to that. And the reason we get away with, uh, let's, okay, let's wait till this thing stop making all that noise. The reason we can get away with using a food processor to make our dough is because we're going to actually let this rest for a little while. Still a little more flour. I love the savory flavor that this gives. The cream cheese has that slight sort of sourness to it, and then all that butter makes it, uh, gives it that crusty sort of uh, crispy coating or, or uh, crust. See how it's starting to form a ball inside the food processor? That's what we want. Nice, so it's a little bit easier to handle now. That's precisely what we're looking for right there. Okay, we're gonna scoop this all out. I've got a piece of cling film on the bench here already set. And we're just gonna whack it right into the middle of that right there. Scrape those down. Okay. Pat it down just a little bit. We're just gonna wrap this up neatly and let it rest in the fridge. Half an hour is best, but I mean, you could put this in the fridge for a couple of days or so if you really wanted to get ahead of your mise en place for, uh, for that dinner party. Okay, into the fridge it goes. And now while that's resting, let's get started on our spot prawn and ham filling for this pie. On the stove here, I've already got uh, a ham stock going. So basically what I did was, I, you know, if, I mean, if it's Easter and you got a ham bone left over, I've just been boiling this guy for a little while and all that meat's starting to fall off. And the re end result is I've got two things. I've got the meat for my pot pie and I've also got a delicious, really rich base to make the, uh, make the sauce with. So. Let's get this thing started. A little bit of vegetable oil in our pan. There we go. We want about equal parts vegetable oil and flour. So that was about uh, that was about three tablespoons. Yeah, about three tablespoons. And then we have three tablespoons left over of flour right here to make our roux with. Okay. In goes mirepoix. This is going, going to be the base and sort of bulk up our dish. Carrots, onions, celery, all going in. There we are. Interesting fact. So next time you're at your local butcher, pop in and just find out what leg the ham actually comes from because apparently it's said that one of the legs is more tender than the other because I guess the pigs when they scratch themselves they use one leg over the other so left or right you'll have to determine that for yourself. Now we just want to sweat that down just a little bit I thought that was a super funny fact. Uh, we'll chop a little bit of garlic to fire in there. Pot pie classic we don't have to be too fancy here I like nice big slices in there. There we go. Sweat those down. I have some fresh thyme. I'm just going to pick the leaves gently off, fire them in there. There we are. Try not to get too many thick, we don't want the thick stems in there. The rest will cook away, but no thick stems. Give this a gentle stir here. Not a rough stir, a gentle stir. There we go. Coming nicely. I'm going to season with a little bit of salt at this point. 
And then I'm going to add my flour. Essentially what we're making here is a roux. And a roux is basically uh, the sort of base for thickening any sauce or liquid. And you can see right away that that flour seems to have absorbed. So it's basically adhered to the fat that we put in the dish. There we go. Now we wanna let that cook for probably two or three minutes just to let that flour sort of have an opportunity to cook out so you don't get that starchy taste in our, in our pot pie mixture, I guess. We'll be back later in the show to pull together our spot prawn and ham pot pie. But first, right after the break, we're getting out of the studio. You'll wanna stick around for that. All right, it's coming together nicely. says comfort food like a food truck and some of the best comfort foods from food trucks come from Mexico. We're here at Puerto Vallarta Amigos and with me today is Antonio. Antonio, Hi. how are you doing sir? How are you man? Yeah, very good, very good. good. Thank you, you're very hey, welcome, always. Thanks for, uh, thanks for doing this for us and no. let us have a look at what you got going on. Mi casa es su casa. Hey, I love always. that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, so the specialty you're doing today, what, uh, yes, can you we, tell me a little we, bit about it? We plan to do some uh, uh, salmon tacos okay. with mango sauce, delicious. Very, very nice. Very, um, um, nice for this weather. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So you're putting, so. and with uh, by using salmon, you're putting a bit of a West Coast spin on uh, on so. the Mexican cuisine, huh? Yeah, exactly. And then coleslaw, chipotle mayo, oh. kind of hot. Don't worry. Delicious. Not too, not too spicy, huh? Not too spicy. <laughs> Always a beer helps. I don't want the camera to see me sweating, huh? <laughs> no, yeah. And, don't and worry. a beer to wash it yeah, down. Yeah, that, that helps. That, that helps. It. Can we hop on and have a look sure, and see how it works? Sure. Let's see. Great. Let's see yeah, how it's going. All right, Antonio, it looks like we've got some stuff going here already. Yes, we are almost ready here. We hit the tortillas, we're ready with the salmon, marinated salmon, and then we're gonna all put it all together and show the tricks. Very nice, I like it. And uh, see, so you've got the chef here quickly putting it all together. Oh, yes. And then we yes. assemble it over here on this side. Exactly. Very nice. Okay, so the tortilla should be hot, but not too much because you can burn it. Yeah, so right, okay. there's a, a trick there. And these are a soft shell tortilla, is it? It's soft, but okay. hot at the same time. Yeah. Not too much, because then you get to stella, yeah, which then, is another, right, another, right, right. another dish. And we're switching into uh, other cuisines, are we? Yeah. Yes, uh, everything has its own. We respect too much the tradition. Oh, we don't okay. want to change nothing here. So this is the grandmother recipes. Oh, wow, okay. So, and each state has different recipes, yeah, and we, we keep it that way. So we put the, the let's move over here. Okay. Okay, put it over here. And then bring the, uh-huh. And now the salmon's and got some herbs and spices. Yes, uh, what would you marinate that in? It's uh, cilantro and some uh, uh, pepper, salt, and some um, lemon, and you know, right, to keep it nice. all, all ready just to, to. Some of those authentic sort of Mexican flavors. Oh, huh? yes, you're gonna, oh, yeah. you're, you're gonna recognize the mango and, and red chili is a nice mix. Very nice, very nice. Yeah. Okay. These, these are uh, these are secret family recipes, or? Well, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's all the the west coast in Mexico. Yeah. Okay. The the tradition comes from the the coast. We come nice. from Puerto Vallarta, so this is authentic. This right, is yeah. the real thing. This Hence is the what you're uh, Amigos, huh? Puerto yeah, Amigos. that's why. Yeah, we yeah. used to have restaurants there, so now you are lucky that we are here. With yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. From recipes. Mexico to us, this is perfect. Yes. Uh, that's great, because I don't like leaving Victoria, so. Okay. <laughs> so this is Pico de Gallo now. We're going to add some tomatoes and uh, lemon and uh, the fresh sa oh, sauce. Oh, so fresh. That looks love delicious. It. You're going to love it. Bright red tomatoes. Those tomatoes look super fresh. Yeah. It's delicious. And then we have uh, some uh, uh, onions and cilantro. Very nice, yeah. So that all comes all together wow, in a this, mix. This, this is a good sized healthy portion here too, isn't it? And then we have this the mango sauce, which are secret recipe, of course. And this is, this is the mango, <laughs> That's the mango. Like mango salsa yes. kind of thing? Yes, oh, yeah. very, very nice. tropical, very Trop yeah. fresh and hot at the same time. Absolutely, so it's got some heat to it. Yes, awesome. yes, yes, and a little yes. sweetness. And, and then cilantro some cilantro to garnish. Yeah, it's not Mexican cuisine unless there's cilantro in there, is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, always is there. Very nice, so do you want to dig in for a bite? You're here? ready to go. All Just right. give it a try, give me your, your opinion. All right. Okay, this, this doesn't look easy to eat, but it's not supposed to be, is it? <laughs> Just uh, squish it. <laughs> don't be shy, don't mm. be shy. <laughs> mm. 
servilleta. Ah, todo eso. Sí, sí, Very tasty, thank you. Nice little bit of heat from the mango sauce. Yes. That's so good. I'm going to keep eating some of this, Antonio. Thank Please, you. Please, you're very thank welcome. Thank you, chef, for cooking that up for us. Don't miss it. We're going to get out of their way so they can get on with their lunch service. Head back into our kitchen studio. Keep going, keep All going. Right. <laughs> Enjoy. Mm. kitchen and we're finishing up our spot prawn and ham pot pie. Now we've got our roux going here and our flowers had a really good chance to cook out so now we want to thicken this we're gonna make this sauce. We got a little bit of white wine there we are. and you'll see as this goes each time I add liquid it's just going to be absorbed by all that flour that roux that we made in there. So more white wine. Why not? We didn't worry about saving any of that for us today. And it goes. And now we'll add some of this ham stock. So I'll just put a little bit closer. Start scooping some of that ham stock into the pan here. There we go. All right, at this point, make sure we stir it really well. We don't want any lumpy uh, flour bits in there. But because we've done such a good job of cooking it out, we should be all good. But you'll see, see how quickly that thickens up already? I think that just looks great. Okay, going to keep going with the ham stock. There we are. Okay, that should just about do it there. I'm going to switch utensils. Use a whisk just to whisk this all together nicely. And then we'll let the flour do its job. In the meantime, we want to add our other ingredients. I've got uh, some lovely yellow corn, some green peas going in here. This is going to add body to that dish, right? So it's going to be this really hearty sort of stew inside the crust. And then I've got the ham. You see I've sort of picked the bones clean here, which looks awesome. I mean, you could save that for Fido afterwards or, you know, grandpa, whatever. Here we go. Into the pan with that. Give this another good stir. So it's not a soup anymore. It's already started to thicken. Looks hearty. Looks incredible. Okay, there's a ham stuck on there. And we let that simmer away just a little bit longer. I'll add a little bit of milk. That just gives us some richness. And then the secret ingredient that I like to use is preserved lemon. Now this is gonna work really well for two reasons. One, it's gonna help cut some of the richness of that fatty ham. And also, as we know, uh, lemon and prawns go super well together. So preserved lemons, you know, like it sounds, it's a preserved product. So basically cured in salt, sits in a jar. You can find it at most grocery stores these days. But it adds this really unique sort of uh, salty, sour flavor to your dish. Especially when you get a bite of one piece, you're just like, woo, that's awesome. In that goes. Excellent. Give it another stir around here. Gets a little harder to stir with the whisk once you got all that good stuff in there. Excellent. See how it's thickening up so nicely there? It looks great. I'm gonna give it a little taste before I add the prawns here. Mmm, tastes really nice. Just this really subtle saltiness from the ham and the ham stock, it's amazing. Now, after that, as it sits right now, we're gonna add our prawns and we're gonna turn it off. So we add the prawns. Look at these beautiful spot prawns. Don't those look incredible? Amazing. And then turn the heat right off and the residual heat from this will cook your spot prawns almost perfectly. And don't forget, we're gonna finish baking these guys. Now let's turn our attention to the other bit of this pot pie here, which is our delicious crust, okay? So over here, remember that uh, dough we'd fired into the, into the fridge there? Well, it's rested now nicely and we're ready to start rolling it out so we can put it on our, onto our dish. Pop it out of the wrap here. Plunk it down onto our board. Squeeze it down with our hand just a little bit there. And then we can start rolling. 
Look at this gorgeous rolling pin, hey? Handmade, handmade. Sam's father-in-law made this. Sam, you know, my kitchen assistant, she's wonderful. Thank you very much, Sam. Thank you, Mr. Oldroyd, for letting me borrow your rolling pin here and for doing such a great job making it. But this one's great because it's an even surface and I'm able to put the pressure on all spots, which is exactly what you want to get a nice level pastry dough. All right. We want to roll it out to about quarter of an inch, I think, is where we want to go. And then we'll just plunk it over our serving vessel here. I'm just going to turn it a little bit here. It's starting to come there. We're almost there. Almost ready to get these guys rolling, <laughs> so to speak. Okay. Tuck that away. And I'll pull up. We're gonna, we're gonna do individual pot pies. So not just one big one, we'll do individual ones. We got these funky little dishes to put them in. Let me pull them up here. Now I'm putting it into it just, any, anything will work. A sheet pan will work. I like this because I can use both hands to grab onto it. Uh, and we have these fancy little pretty cups that we can do them in. We have our cooked, uh, our cooked um, filling that we've chilled. It's important here to chill out your spot prawn filling because if you put it in there hot, it's just gonna make your dough soggy from the inside. Oh, we'll do all four here, why not? Our spot prawns are amazing. They're native here to our west coast, and they're just incredible little creatures. The females have been said to uh, carry like something like four, four to 5,000 eggs, which is pretty incredible. Now, comfort food, we're rustic. So I'm just gonna cut a nice chunk of that dough. That's pretty close to a quarter of an inch there. I think I did all right. And I'm literally just gonna lay it right over top. I'm not worried about the dough kind of hanging out over top or hanging out around the sides. That's all gonna act as our dipping and our stuff for afterwards. But the one surprise we're going to do before I get too far into this, we've got these gorgeous little spot prawns right here. Mwah, love these things. We're gonna tuck them right underneath the pastry like a little blankie and put them in there. Be a nice surprise for the kids when you put this down on the dinner table. <laughs> there we go. Let's put the other ones in. Four beautiful, look at those, just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. And now let's keep wrapping them up. You've heard of pigs in a blanket. Well, we got spot prawns in a blanket here today. I'm cooking on the coast, not messing around. All right, I'm just pinching it ever so slightly around the edges. We wanna make sure that we can see our little friends there. Okay, beautiful. I want to give it a little spray just to help it shine up a little bit when we throw it into our 350 degree oven. There we go. And maybe I'll just give it a couple little pokes here. Okay, like I said, into the oven, 350 degrees. We're gonna let this bad boy cook until that crust comes out nice and golden brown. Probably about uh, 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. Now you know what they say, a watch spot prawn and ham pot pie never cooks. So while we were away, while we were uh, cutting away there, I just quickly tied it up a little bit and it's been about 15 to 20 minutes. I made it, I made a bit of an error there. I said 350, you want it at 400, okay? So 400 to get that nice and golden brown. Let's go check them out, pop them out of the oven. Ooh, baby, look at those. Our little friends in their blanket are looking sexy. Pastry's cooked up really nicely there. It's nice and crisp and golden brown. That looks incredible. Awesome. Got a little plate ready here for them to go on. Let's see if we can dig one of these guys out here without... Uh... Oh, look at that. There we have it. Doesn't that look spectacular? It smells incredible. And the presentation, sure to wow every time. And there you have it, our West Coast take on a classic crusty comfort dish, spot prawn and ham pot pie. Mmm, so good, I can't wait to dig into this. Now what better way to enjoy the crusty classic than with a delicious beverage. With me today is Kristen from Seasider Cidery. How are you, Kristen? I'm great. Thanks for coming on the show. It's great Thank to see you. you. Great to be here. 
What can you tell me about your cider? I know it's uh, I know it's an amazing product. I love it myself. But uh, why don't you tell everybody at home about it? Well, um, I brought today out a cider called Pippins. So we are a farm and cider house on the Saanich Peninsula, and this one is a single varietal made from yellow Newton Pippins. It's oh, all cool. certified organic. Right, so just one apple is used to make this cider, not exactly. a blend. Hey? Oh, and very cool. And it's a heritage apple, so it's got a little history to it. Um, nice. Yeah. Story behind the label. I love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Fantastic. Uh, and how long has the cidery been around? We uh, bought that farm about 11 years ago okay. and have been growing ever since and uh, so nowadays we're open daily for tours and tastings. Um, nice. People can come in and try over a dozen different ciders that we make. Oh wow. Um, this one in particular, the Pippins, just won gold at the Pacific Northwest Cider Awards. We just heard this well, week. Well congratulations, so. that's Thank super you. exciting. Yeah, yeah that's a big award, especially uh, with the number of cideries that seem to be popping up around uh, around this neck of the woods. Yeah, hey? absolutely. It's really exciting to be in the industry right now. There's a lot of great new cider coming on board here on the island and in other places and uh, we're just happy to be a part of it. Nice. Well, you've definitely got me aching to try some, so why don't we pour a little bit and see how it goes with the uh, spot prawn and ham pot pie. Excellent. We put a little uh, West Coast twist on our uh, on a classic uh, pot pie dish here, so. Perfect. Well, I think the pippins will go well with this because the acidity of the, the cider will cut well the, um, the richness of the dish, so. Nice. There's a fork for you. You. And then all I would say, all I would do here is I would just break this piece right off. Yeah, see, we left lots of crust on there, mm. and then you can actually dip the crust right in there. Can I use my fingers too? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, look at that. Thank you. Mm. It smells crisp. Like I love that. It's got that acidity. It's very fruit forward. Mm. This is literally one of my favorite ciders out Excellent. there. It's so good. Yeah, definitely a gold medal from cooking on the coast as well. Cheers, Cheers to that, yeah. And so, I mean, you're an award-winning cidery, right? Is that the, That's not the first medal you've won. No, in fact, um, this Pippins uh, won gold at another international cider competition just a few Internationally, months ago. Internationally, hey, wow, yeah. fantastic. So, yeah, so we're making a name for ourselves. We're um, selling throughout Western Canada and mm. uh, parts of the U.S. now, so. Cool, and really unique bottling, too. I love the, I love the pop tops. I think those are so fantastic. Thank you. Well, well, they're supposed meant to be practical. They're meant to be, you know, shared, and uh, they're meant to go well with food. Fantastic. Well, I think it was an excellent choice for the pairing today. So, check out our website where you'll find more information on today's show and maybe a few surprises. I'm Garrett Shack. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to savor the flavor. All right, let's take back in here. Just break off another piece of that crust. Mm. All right, it's a cream cheese crust.